Hello, I've got a few steampunk items to show you. And if I start with, I'm going to start with some spectacle frames. And first of all, I've got a nice metal case. And how small this case is, it still contains a pair of spectacles. So now, in fact, this is um, Brooks and Wadham Limited, Nottingham Workshop and Mansfield. So I'll place this case down on the table again, and this time I'll show you the spectacles. We wouldn't dream of purchasing a pair of spectacles at this size now, would we? It's got curl sides. It's got a loop bridge. But you notice, even for a metal frame, there is no pads. This is a precious metal, so it's hypoallergenic. That means you won't get any allergic reaction from the frame. And these are ophthalmic lenses. Typical of its day. This is before the first NHS frames came out. Next, I've got another one. This has got a nice velvet lining. Again, it's a metal case. This one says, see caffeine and see better. As I close it, again, metal case, but you can see that this has got a pattern across the case. And in fact, it's got the name of the opticians that supplied it, decaffeine. Very, very old. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Oh, thank you. Nescafe I'm ready Gauntlet. for that. Thank you. And we, in this case, we have a rimless pair. Rimless is dictated by the fact that it's actually screws going through the lens. So they drill a hole in the lens and work it that way. This has got pads. They're very small. And you can see these are very worn. Um, and they're fastened in a, across the bridge. If this doesn't have sides on the frame, it has a chain and it has a loop. So you'd loop this on your ear and the frame would hang down. When you wanted to look at something, usually close work, you'd then prop this on your nose. For anyone old enough to remember, do they remind you of anybody? Dame Edna Everidge. These were very prevalent. It's a Supra frame, so it's got a nylon cord around the lens. And it's got this um, pattern across the top, which a lot of the ladies used to wear. And you can see that the sides are actually very well shaped they used to sit perfectly on a patient it has again the acetate bridge as well so that would sit nicely on the nose and it'd be very very comfortable and actually it's quite lightweight as well here's the first of my tortoise shell frames this particular one, straight side with a drop end. Again, there's no pads, it's a fixed bridge. And it is made out of real turtle shell. In its day, in its day, this was two shillings and sixpence. It's worth a lot more than that now. But you can't buy them for ophthalmic use anymore. The next one I come to, this is called a rimless. 
and again it's because the screws that are holding it in so all this is a solid piece one piece of frame across the front and it screws into the lens just at this point so it's only got one screw holding it in on each lens it's got pads which are solid plastic pads they do have a little bit of movement against the frame this is so that the different bridge shape of the nose would work and again the sides these are straight edge with a drop end The next one I have this is a curl side frame you'll see how the, the sides work so it's a straight frame and then it comes round as a curl and that can be bent around your ears to hold it in place it does have little pads these pads are very are not adjustable um, a nice size bridge but it does keep the frame away from you this is actually um, a coated a coating around wrapped around the metal frame again it's a precious metal frame and I'm not sure now this isn't all marked beautiful frame and again before NHS frames came out Here comes the next of my turtle shell frames. And this particular one has a keyhole bridge. It's nice and thin. They are quite brittle these days. And again, straight side with a drop end and a fixed bridge. The keyhole bridge is designed so it can fit a bigger bridge, a bigger nose size, but a small nose size would still fit or most small now sizes would still fit in there and it's a panto shape my next frame is a round eye again turtle shell this one is a little bit different on the sides so we're looking at it now, it's got the fixed bridge, it's made of turtle shell, it's nice and round. When you look at the sides now, it doesn't have a drop end, it's actually a wrap around side. So it's made just a little bit longer and then that goes straight across the back of the ear instead of going down behind the ear. Fixed bridge, and you'll notice that on these earlier frames as well, they don't do a shape for the bridge it's just the frame is exactly the same when it reaches where the nose goes coming to something a little bit different now this particular one I call them opera glasses you've got a loop here so you can hang a chain off that and clip that to your top and when you're not using them you keep it folded together you're at the opera you want to see what's on going on on stage you open it up and you actually have it that way up and put it in front of your eyes and that will magnify what's on the stage fantastic design very good for space saving Here I have the last of my turtle shell. Now can you see something a bit different there? When you look across inside the eye, it actually has two little triangles in each eye. What actually happens with this one, you leave it without any lenses at the top and you put your reading prescription in here. You could say it's an early bifocal. Um, so you're actually looking 
the, your clothes work through the bottom but you don't need a prescription for the top so you look through the top and you can see in the distance with no obstruction the side again is a, a the straight side with a drop end and you've again got the fixed bridge and it's not shaped for the bridge itself so when it goes on your nose it sits in that same position so that was the last of my turtle shell frames I could do with a drink of this coffee especially as soon as SRP's done it for me and here's the last of my frames on the antique selection this one again is a precious metal frame this one actually is hallmarked 14k so that's a 14 karat rolled gold frame what we have a looped bridge there's no pads or anything so that would sit directly on your nose it's got a small lens shape and it's got a wrap around side but these were designed so they could be useful in sport as well so you notice it's got a loop at the end now that particular loop you would fasten a cord to that and pull it tight against the head so if you was doing any um, sudden movements or anything the glasses wouldn't slide off the stand is designed although it isn't a steampunk stand it's designed to look like an old-fashioned type of display so it's all nuts and bolts but it looks very good displaying these frames in fact that's a super dry stand now something else that you would get from the older the older opticians a magnifier now this one you'll notice has got a black handle but actually I can unscrew that and it unscrews here as well but I'm not going to do that I don't want the lens to come out but it can all come apart so that the lens because they, they are glass they were prone to chipping so they could change it now this is um, a plus prescription or magnifying prescription on both sides so it's the same on both sides this is about eight diopters which is two times magnification and um, it is quite heavy at one time that the one time that was the only type of magnifier you could get but it did come in various sizes um, the reason they use glass is because it has the best optics the best visual acuity through it hence that a more modern day magnifier is molded plastic they have done a lot more research on these um, this one is made in germany by eschenbach which is one of the best one of the leading um, magnifying companies and you can see here of course the big thing about this is it's half the weight of the other one the next thing to show you is an antique trial frame now you've seen trial frames in practice where if you've gone for an eye test with this one you see it's just got a half loop at the bottom and with that half loop you literally just slot the lenses in so you would test one eye you'd have an occluder in that eye So imagine that as occluded and you'd have the lens in here and you would read off the test charts and adjust the lenses accordingly and this one the particular one would fit two lenses in but then if you wanted to put the reading had the reading had lens would actually slot on the front so that you could say ah oh, what's the smallest print you could read on here hold it at the correct distance and what you will notice there is what I've just done is put two different size lenses this is a full aperture 
So if I go onto the full aperture lens, oh, it's adjustable on the bridge. It's adjustable on the height of the bridge and it's adjustable on the width. So we can go smaller and bigger PD. Now, show me, going back to these lenses, as soon as I started to show you, I have here a full aperture lens, that's a full aperture sphere, and we also have a full aperture sill. You'll notice with the sill that it's blanked out across the sides here, and it also has little lines engraved onto the lens, so we know exactly where the axis is which will be marked in the trial frame, whereas you don't have it on them, you just have the full lens. On the small aperture, you've got it slightly different. This is the sphere, and what you'll notice with the sphere, it's got marking of what the power is and whether it's plus or minus, and you've just got the small lens in the middle. Now, if you was to put, for the sill, if you was to put marks, engravings on the lens, it would obstruct the vision. So they do it on the outside edge of the lens. So with the outside edge of the lens, you'll see the engravings, but the lens itself looks the same as on the small aperture sphere. Now, we all know that when we go to the opticians, um, with our spectacles it's because the screws come loose in the old days they didn't used to have screws in the frame they had rivets they were tapered so here is a tapered rivet and what you'll notice is it's much thicker at the top than at the bottom so you'd push the rivet into the frame and you'd tap it in with a little optical hammer until it was in the right position then you would cut off and file that little bit of rivet so that you've now got a perfect fit, but it's nice and tight. Not much call for the rivets these days. That'll do, I think. How long was it? 